Hello mates, uh, good afternoon and welcome again to the uh, mechanical ventilation course for dummies. Thank you very much for your attention and my name is Alberto Medina. I am a pediatric uh, consultant in a pediatric intensive care unit in the north of Spain and today I would like to overview the settings in this particular ventilator. Considering this particular situation with uh, COVID-19, and in this case, this virus affected more an, uh, adults than children, and this virus produces uh, usually an ARDS. In one of the next videos, we will overview the concept of the ARDS and the uh, strategy to treat uh, this particular condition and the most important thing, how can we recruit the land in this ARDS? Okay. First of all, we can check and the different parameters that they are in Spanish and I can translate uh, uh, each one for you. This is the respiratory rate, this is the tidal volume, this is the peak flow, uh, we have here the post time necessary in this case in this particular ventilator to set up all the settings and this is one of the differences uh, in between this ventilator and the market uh, servo I explained by uh, Mireya. Thanks Mireya. And we have here the square uh, waveform in a volume control this is the typical square waveform and in this other side, in the right hand side of the, of the spring, we have three different parameters. These are more or less common to many other um, modes. One is the P level, the, uh, the number 5 is a good number to remember, 5 centimeters of water. In a normal situation, then we can set up this. Uh, uh, this level without any problem. In other cases, like, a, like in a ARDS, probably we have to increase this level to another another limit, and we will explain this in another on another uh, another hands-on sessions. And we have here the FiO2. Uh, the majority of the times we have to set up this FiO2 up to 100 uh, after the intubation, and we have here the trigger, the inspiratory trigger. In adult patients, the normal values in this uh, inspiratory trigger uh, varies in between 1 to 2 liters per minute. Okay, we can set up in this case the number 2. So let's go to explain the different parameters here. And uh, because this uh, infection, this COVID-19, is affecting more adults than children, I would like to explain you this mode with an uh, adult example. So, the respiratory rate used more useful in, in adults is uh, varies in between 10 to 18 uh, breaths per minute. So, 15 is a good number to remember in the respiratory rate. Tidal volume. The tidal volume is important to remember uh, the number 6 mils per kilo of ideal body weight, but in general uh, we can use 300 uh, milliliters uh, for women and for teenagers and 400 milliliters for uh, men in general. So we can set up in this case 300 milliliters for this example. This is the uh, pause time the pause time, which is related to the inspiratory time, you, re you have to remember that we have uh, two different times in the cycle. One is the inspiratory time and the other one is the expiratory time. The inspiratory time is divided, is divided in two. One is the time necessary to introduce the air in the lungs and the other part is the inspiratory time in which the air is completely stopped inside of the, of the alveoli. In other words, the inspiratory valve and the expiratory valve are closed at the same time. Uh, we usually set up the pause time uh, about the 30% 30, 30 of the total inspiratory time. Okay, here we have another parameter, which is the flow 
the peak flow. And the peak flow, in the case of the servo I, which was uh, presented by Mireya, uh, is calculated directly by the ventilator. But in this particular ventilator, we need to set up this parameter, the flow, the peak flow. And this peak flow is related to the other parameter down here, which is the, uh, is, uh, the flow waveform. And we have to set up this in the typical waveform for the volume control, which is the square waveform. Okay. And if we change here the peak flow, we can, as you can see here on the bottom, we can change directly the relationship in between the inspiratory time and the expiratory time. It's very easy to manage this flow considering this calculator. And we have only to increase, in this case, the peak flow up to 22 liters per minute in order to obtain a inspiratory expiratory ratio of 1 to 2. This here. So, uh, in sum, uh, summarizing this, we have here an uh, inspiratory time, total inspiratory time of 1.3, and in this case, a 30% a 30 of 1.3 can be 0 0.4 seconds for the pause time. Okay, great. We have here an uh, inspiratory time. We have to move now again. We have here an uh, inspiratory time of 1.3 considering that part of this inspiratory time, total inspiratory time, is a pause time, 0 0.4, and in this case, uh, having in consideration the, the frequency, the respiratory rate, we have here a relationship in between the inspiratory time and the expiratory time of 1 to 2 with a peak flow of 20. And now, we can set up the alarms and we have here different alarms one is the peak pressure alarm which is the most important one and we have to consider the situation of the patient in a normal condition probably we don't need more than 20 centimeters of water of the peak pressure so we can set up the peak pressure in between 25 to 30. The second alarm is the total respiratory rate. It is important to remember this alarm uh, when the patient uh, begins to breathe. The other one is the, the minute volume. The fourth one is the uh, expiratory tidal volume. And the final one is the, sorry, is the spontaneous tidal volume. So we can set these parameters before the connection of the patient, but afterwards we need to recheck these alarms considering the current situation of the patient in this moment. Good, let's go to connect the patient. And we have here our simulator. And first of all, we have to check the numbers on the top of the screen. The most important one is the peak pressure because in the volume control mode the, vol the tidal volume is constant but the peak pressure varies depending on the compliance and the resistance. And we should not only focus the attention in the peak pressure but also in the plateau pressure. And if we can calculate the plateau pressure using a particular maneuver which is the inspiratory pulse. Here we are, and we have here a plateau pressure or 22 of 22 in this case. Other numbers, important to remember, this respiratory rate, uh, and it's necessary to, to check this respiratory rate, comparing this number with the previous uh, respiratory uh, rate set in the ventilator and in this case it's exactly the same. This means that we don't have a spontaneous breaths, in this case, in this case assist breaths, or 
odd triggering. And other important point to remember and to check in the monitoring of the patient, in the numbers, is the expiratory tidal volume. And we have to compare this expiratory tidal volume with the actually tidal volume set in the ventilator. Next, we have here the graphs, and we have three graphs. The pressure time curve, the volume time curve. In the pressure time curve, we can check the peak pressure, the plateau pressure, and the peak pressure. And in the volume time curve, we can also check the leaks. The leaks, but with the, with the leaks, we can check the leaks also with the number. The most important curve is the flow time curve. And in the flow time curve, we have two different parts. The green one is the inspiratory phase with two different parts. One is the inspiratory phase in which they are, the air is going to the alveoli. The second part is the post time, and as we previously mentioned, in this particular phase, the inspiratory valve and the expiratory valve are closed at the same time. So the air is in the alveoli, and the yellow area is the expiratory phase and it is important to check the phase in between the end of the flow and the initiation of the next inspiratory time, the, the next breath. We have to check that we really have a zero flow phase which means that we don't have air trapping dynamic air trapping, which is typical of the ostrotic patient, asthmatic patient. So, thank you very much for your attention and I hope that is useful for you. Thank you.